The First Taiwan Strait Crisis also called the 1954–1955 Taiwan Strait Crisis, the Formosa Crisis, the Offshore Islands Crisis or the 1955 Taiwan Strait Crisis was a brief armed conflict that took place between the governments of the People's Republic of China and the Republic of China which by then had fled and was based in Taiwan. The PRC seized the Yijiangshan Islands, forcing the ROC to abandon the Takan Islands. The United States and the ROC navies joined forces to evacuate ROC military personnel and civilians from the Takan Islands to Taiwan. Though the Takan Islands changed hands during the crisis, American news reports focused almost exclusively on the Kinmen and Matsu Islands, which were the sites of frequent artillery duels. The Chinese Civil War had receded in scale in 1949, with Chiang Kai-shek's Kuomintang KMT government and 1.3 million supporters abandoning the Chinese mainland and relocating the national government to the island of Taiwan also known as Formosa. While hostilities in western and southwestern China continued, the territory under the jurisdiction of the Republic of China was effectively reduced to Taiwan, the Pescadoras, and several island groups along the coast of southeastern China. Hainan Island fell to the Communists in April 1950 and the Choshan Islands were evacuated by the Nationalists in May 1950, even before the First Taiwan Strait Crisis. The Matsu and Kinmen Island groups, situated in the Taiwan Strait just off the coast of the Chinese mainland, were the Nationalists' first line of defense against the Communist Party of China and were heavily fortified by Chiang. The islands off the shore of Zhejiang province were seen as a foothold to recover the mainland and housed the reduced provincial government of Chiang's native province. The conflict While the United States recognized Chiang's government as the sole legitimate government for all of China, U.S. President Harry S. Truman announced on 5 January 1950, that the United States would not engage in any intervention in the Taiwan Strait disputes, and that he would not intervene in the event of an attack by the PRC. However, after the outbreak of the Korean War on 25 June 1950, Truman declared that the "...neutralization of the Straits of Formosa." was in the best interest of the United States, and he sent the U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet into the Taiwan Strait to prevent any conflict between the Republic of China and the People's Republic of China, effectively putting Taiwan under American protection. On 27 June 1950, President Truman issued the following statement, The attack upon Korea makes it plain beyond all doubt that communism has passed beyond the use of subversion to conquer independent nations and will now use armed invasion and war. It has defied the orders of the Security Council of the United Nations issued to preserve international peace and security. In these circumstances the occupation of Formosa by communist forces would be a direct threat to the security of the Pacific area and to United States forces performing their lawful and necessary functions in that area. Accordingly, I have ordered the Seventh Fleet to prevent any attack on Formosa. As a corollary of this action, I am calling upon the Chinese government on Formosa to cease all air and sea operations against the mainland. The Seventh Fleet will see that this is done. The determination of the future status of Formosa must await the restoration of security in the Pacific, a peace settlement with Japan, or consideration by the United Nations. President Truman later ordered John Foster Dulles, the foreign policy advisor to U.S. Secretary of State Dean Acheson, to carry out his decision on neutralizing Taiwan in drafting the Treaty of San Francisco of 1951 the peace treaty with Japan, which excluded the participation of both the ROC and the PRC. Since no recipient was specified in the Treaty of Taiwan's sovereignty, it has been used by supporters of Taiwan independence to argue for their position that the sovereignty status of Taiwan undetermined, despite the Japanese having already agreed to return Taiwan to Republic of China through the instrument of surrender signed at end of the war. According to the author George H. Kerr, a supporter of Taiwanese independence, in his book Formosa Betrayed, the political status of Taiwan was under the trust of the Allied powers against Japan. It would be the responsibility of the United Nations if this could not be resolved in near future as designed in the peace treaty. The Nationalist China government now based in Taiwan maintained as its goal the recovery of control of mainland China, and this required a resumption of the military confrontation with the Red Chinese. 
Truman and his advisers regarded that goal as unrealizable, but regret over losing China to international communism was quite prominent in public opinion at the time, and the Truman administration was criticized by anti-communists for preventing any attempt by Chiang Kai-shek's forces to liberate mainland China. Truman, a member of the Democratic Party, did not run for re-election in the presidential election of 1952, even though he was eligible to do so. This election was won by the Republican Dwight Eisenhower, a World War II general. On 2 February 1953, the new president lifted the Seventh Fleet's blockade in order to fulfill demands by anti-communists to unleash Chiang Kai-shek on mainland China. In August 1954, the nationalists placed 58,000 troops on Kinmen and 15,000 troops on Matsu. The ROC began building defensive structures and the PRC began shelling ROC installations on Kinmen. Zhou Enlai, premier of the People's Republic of China responded with a declaration on of August 1954, that Taiwan must be liberated. He dispatched the People's Liberation Army PLA to the area, and it began shelling both Kinmen and the Matsu Islands. Despite warnings from the U.S. against any attacks on the Republic of China, five days before the signing of the Manila Pact, the PLA unleashed a heavy artillery bombardment of Kinmen on September 3, and intensified its actions in November by bombing the Takan Islands. This renewed Cold War fears of communist expansion in Asia at a time when the PRC was not recognized by the United States Department of State. Chiang Kai-shek's government was supported by the United States because the ROC was part of the containment of communism which stretched from a devastated South Korea to an increasingly divided Southeast Asia. On September 12, the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff recommended the use of nuclear weapons against mainland China. Eisenhower, however, resisted pressure to use nuclear weapons or involve American troops in the conflict. However, on 2 December 1954, the United States and the ROC agreed to the Sino-American Mutual Defense Treaty, which did not apply to islands along the Chinese mainland. This treaty was ratified by the U.S. Senate on 9 February 1955. The PLA seized the Yijangshan Islands on 18 January 1955. Fighting continued in nearby islands off the coast of Zhejiang, as well as around Kinmen and the Matsu Islands in Fujian. On 29 January 1955, the Formosa Resolution was approved by both houses of the U.S. Congress authorizing Eisenhower to use U.S. forces to defend the ROC and its possessions in the Taiwan Strait against armed attack. In February, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill warned the U.S. against using nuclear weapons, but in March, U.S. Secretary of State John Foster Dulles stated publicly that the U.S. was seriously considering a nuclear strike. In response, the NATO foreign ministers warned at a meeting of the alliance against such action. In late March, U.S. Admiral Robert B. Carney said that Eisenhower is planning to destroy Red China's military potential. Topic aftermath Some scholars hypothesized the PRC backed down in the face of American nuclear brinksmanship and in light of the lack of willingness by the Soviet Union to threaten nuclear retaliation for an attack on the PRC. Others see the case as an example of effective application of extended deterrence by the United States. In any case, the Red Chinese government stated on 23 April 1955, that it was willing to negotiate. On May 1 the PLA temporarily ceased shelling Kinmen and Matsu. The fundamental issues of the conflict remained unresolved, however, and both sides subsequently built up their military forces on their respective sides of the Taiwan Strait leading to a new crisis three years later. There are strong indications that Mao used the crisis in order to provoke the United States into making nuclear threats which would give him home support to pour money in research and production of Chinese nuclear weapons and missiles. After American nuclear threats during the first Taiwan Strait crisis the Politburo did give in 1955 green light to pursue nuclear weapons and missiles. The first of China's nuclear weapons tests took place in 1964, and its first successful hydrogen bomb test occurred in 1967. Topic see also Battle of Kunning II Second Taiwan Strait Crisis Third Taiwan Strait Crisis Legal Status of Taiwan Topic Further reading Bush, R. and O'Hanlon, M. 2007. A War Like No Other, The Truth About China's Challenge to America. Wiley. ISBN 0 471 98677 1. Bush, R. 2006. Untying the Knot Making Peace in the Taiwan Strait. 
Brookings Institution Press. ISBN 0-8157-1290-1 Carpenter, T. 2006. America's Coming War with China, A Collision Course Over Taiwan. Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN 1-4039-6841-1 Cole, B. 2006. Taiwan's Security, History and Prospects. Routledge. ISBN 0-415-36581-3 Copper, J. 2006. Playing with Fire, The Looming War with China over Taiwan. Prager Security International General Interest. ISBN 0-275-98888-0 Federation of American Scientists et al., 2006. Chinese Nuclear Forces and U.S. Nuclear War Planning Gill, B. 2007. Rising Star, China's New Security Diplomacy. Brookings Institution Press. ISBN 0-8157-3146-9 Shirk, S. 2007. China, Fragile Superpower, How China's Internal Politics Could Derail Its Peaceful Rise. Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-530609-0 Sang, S. If China Attacks Taiwan, Military Strategy, Politics and Economics. Routledge. ISBN 0-415-40785-0 Tucker, N.B. Dangerous Strait, The U.S.-Taiwan-China Crisis. Columbia University Press. ISBN 0-231-13564-5 Watry, David M. Diplomacy at the Brink, Eisenhower, Churchill, and Eden in the Cold War. Baton Rouge, Louisiana State University Press, 2014. Topic references Topic External links First Taiwan Strait Crisis from Global Security. Org First and Second Taiwan Strait Crisis, Kamoi and Matsu Islands of Taiwan from the Cold War Museum.